Meet the Pixel Book, or as Google called it, the Laptop Reimagined. This is the third Chromebook from Google, and it's their first to support an active stylus and Google Assistant. It's amazingly thin, it's beautifully built, and it's sinfully expensive. Let's dive in and take a closer look. The Pixel Book is beautiful. We can discuss the price or why Google is making it, and we probably won't have the same opinion, but there's no denying how good it looks. It's super thin, it's just a hair over 10 millimeters, and the two and a half pound weight makes it easy to carry around all day. The overall aesthetic just screams Pixel. The aluminum body has that same distinct glass shade on the back, which is where the Wi-Fi antennas live and probably makes them less obstructed. And the only marking or logo on the device is the Google G we've all become familiar with. The business end also has some really interesting design choices. Silicone-like pads surround the trackpad, and this is a pretty bold move. They're bound to show some dirt eventually. They do serve as a comfortable palm and wrist rest when you're typing, and when you fold the screen back, they're sort of like anti-skid bumpers. Uh, that kind of means they're even more prone to get dirty, though. They are nice for typing, and so far, these are still clean. The keyboard itself is really comfortable to type on. The keys don't have the amount of travel many of us are used to, but they're not quite as mushy as the Surface Pro's keyboard. They feel a lot like the new MacBook's keys. It didn't take long to learn to really like them, and I'm coming from a stiff mechanical keyboard at my desktop. The 12.3 inch touchscreen has a 2400 by 1600 resolution. It's nice and bright and it's built with tablet use in mind. The screen flips over a full 180 degrees and there's a, a thick bezel on all sides just like your tablet has. The touch response is excellent and it's pretty clear that Google thought about this as a tablet during every step of the design. The Pixelbook comes with several different hardware configurations. The base model, which is what we're reviewing here, has a fanless 7th gen Intel Core i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigs of disk space. This is complete overkill for Chrome, but it's also completely fun to use. The 41 watt hour battery was designed to last you up to 10 hours, and we're seeing somewhere between 7 and 8 during a normal workday. If you were to turn down the brightness and really care about conserving your battery, 10 hours doesn't seem too far off the mark. The included 45 watt charger gives you about two hours worth of juice with just 15 minutes of charge time if you need a little more. You'll find two USB-C ports, one on each side, but none of the larger standard USB-A ports we're all used to. There's also no SD card slot. And this combination can make something that should be simple, like transferring a photo from your camera, more difficult than it needs to be. On the software side, Google Assistant is now a big part of Chrome. The Assistant button on the keyboard springs Assistant to life, and you can ask it to do the very same things that you could with a Google Home or with your phone. You can also opt in for Assistant to read what's on your display like you can with an Android phone. And if you choose to type instead of talk when you ask Assistant something, it types back. That's great for quiet times and places. The Assistant is also great with the $99 Pixelbook pen. If you press the button on the pen, the Assistant mode is enabled and you can use the pen to circle a portion of your screen and this tells Assistant to check out what you circled and do something with it. It can look up things like actors or famous people, tell you about a movie, or even offer to add events to your calendar. When you're not using the pen as a gateway to Google Assistant, you've got 2,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, complete with brush tilt support, and there's a 10 millisecond latency for doing anything, highlighting, drawing, doodling a mustache on your coworker, whatever. It's not perfect, and we shouldn't expect anything to really be perfect, but it's pretty good. I think you'll like it. The Pixel Board completely supports Google Play right out of the box. Android apps are a big part of the Pixelbook experience. 
like any other Chromebook with Android app support, it's a mixture of pleasure and pain. You'll find some apps work naturally and they'll resize and you can move the window wherever you like, but others can be a little more stubborn. Of course, most Android apps are built with a phone in mind, so even if they do resize, they're not always beautiful. When it's all said and done though, you'll probably be able to find an Android app that works for you regardless of what you're trying to do. You just have to be bold and install plenty of different ones. At the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, is the Pixelbook really worth $1,000? From a hardware perspective, it is. It's got a fanless KB Lake processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of digital storage. And that's a costly hardware combination, especially when you add a really great 12 inch touchscreen and an expensive aluminum and glass chassis. You're going to be starting at the $1,000 mark when you do that. Companies like Asus and Samsung make really great Chromebooks and they check in between four and 500 bucks. You won't get the very latest specs, but what you get is more than enough to do anything that Chrome is capable of. No, the Pixelbook isn't for most people. And quite frankly, it's kind of foolish for most people to buy one. The Samsung Chromebook Plus or either of the Asus high-end flips are just a better buy. The Pixelbook is a Halo device. A Chromebook Google made for people who want a Chromebook, but also want it to showcase the best in hardware and design. Is that a bad thing? Certainly not, and there are plenty of people who really want exactly what the Pixelbook offers. But anyone who buys one isn't going to be disappointed at what Chrome can do because they already knew what they were getting. At least they should have because they're spending at least $1,000 on a Chromebook. I don't recommend the Pixelbook to anyone because the people who want it and should buy it already know what it has to offer. It's the Chromebook Google built because they can and because it's cool.